So I'll be presenting work um, that's joint with both of my great advisors, uh, Brett and uh, Rafi, as well as my excellent research partner, Jacob. And the work is titled Gigadorum, Breaking the Billion Address Barrier. OK, so I guess before we talk about all this Dorham, Gigadorum stuff, let's just review like why secure multi-party computation in the first place. Right? So say we have a set of parties, say maybe marketing agencies, each having some sort of personal data that they wouldn't like to share. Um, maybe with the marketing agencies, it would be their competitive advantage. So of course, it wouldn't be wise to share it. But they still would all mutually benefit from having the output of some computation on the joint pool of data. Okay? So if we had a trusted third party, they would just send all their inputs to the trusted third party that would compute the function and send them the result. Lovely, I guess we can all go home. Um, but not so many trusted third parties out there in the real world, I guess. So what we have instead is MPC, uh, which uh, refers to a class of protocols which allow mutually distrusting parties to compute functions on their joint set of data without revealing it to one another, even in the presence of some of these parties uh, being malicious. So there you go. They're happy, they get the result. Okay. So there are many issues that prevent MPC from gaining mass deployment. Uh, but the one that we'll be focusing on today, a central issue, is that MPC works in the circuit model of computation. Right? So if I have any snark fellas in the audience, you guys know writing CIRCOM, a lot harder than writing Python. Um, as well as that some computations just don't fit in so nicely within the circuit model. For example, here, if, you have, uh, if you're just trying to write a contains function, and you have a target and a sorted array, it would take log operations to find out if that element is in the array if you were in the random access model of computation. But in the circuit model, that would take linearly many operations, right? So circuit model is kind of not so good because it's harder to program, but also make certain computations that would be um, feasible um, completely infeasible. OK, so our joint dream, I'm assuming everybody within this room, um, is to do MPC in the RAM model. So let's, let's think about that. So first of all, I guess, let's talk about what the random access model of computation is, at least the way we'll be regarding it within this talk. And the way we'll be regarding it is that you have some small processor that can like, operate on very few memory locations, and it can read and write into this much larger memory. Okay. So uh, a first step breakthrough towards doing RAM MPC was Oblivious RAM of Goldrak and Ostrovsky, which is a protocol that allows this smaller processor to access a much larger um, outsource memory, um, such that the memory or anybody who can inspect the memory wouldn't find out which, mem which locations are written or read or anything like that, essentially hiding the access pattern, where plain encryption would just hide the contents of memory, which is not sufficient for many applications. So OK, we were just talking about this client-server model. This is not the model that we're in in RAM MPC. So it might be useful to think, OK, how is the memory going to be held when we're doing an MPC computation? And the answer to that question would be secret sharing, right? So we have some sort of memory, and we envision that it is secret shared amongst the party, and this is essentially the prerequisite for doing RAM MPC. So now that we have the memory secret shared between us, we can finally talk about what distributed oblivious RAM is, also known as DORAM. Um, so DORAM is a protocol. It's a multi-party protocol that satisfies the following functionality. Um, you have a secret shared memory, as we already said, and you can do uh, read and write operations into it, where the operations themselves are secret shared, um, such that we have the security guarantee, servers learn nothing. Kind of nice. OK. So the golden goose, why we're doing this, is that because we can take MPC, we can take DORAM, we can smash them together, and we get RAM MPC, which is, I guess, as we started off the talk, is our joint dream. Where we're all, we're all yearning for this RAM MPC thing. OK, cool. So of course, we're all happy. So OK, before we start dreaming about like programming RAM MPC and deploying it wherever we like, we better like revisit where are, where's the DORAM literature, particularly like the practical DORAM literature today. So today, there's two main techniques for um, building DORAM. The first is uh, function secret sharing. Um, which I will not get into, but essentially these techniques allow you to have small polylog communication 
and computation per, com communication per query, while the computation per query is linear. Right, so as you can see with these constructions, right, they're pretty good for um, small sized memories, maybe even some medium sized memories, but just around two to the 20, the performance of these DORAMs like depletes and goes to zero very rapidly, which is I guess what we would expect to see once the compute bottleneck kicks in. So the other technique for, sorry about that, the other technique for uh, building DORAMs is using the hierarchical solution, which is the tool which is often used to build ORMs uh, that I won't get too much into, but it's essentially a framework to take oblivious hash tables and turn them into a fully oblivious uh, data structure. Um, so we can use them to build DORMs as well, apparently. And these give us uh, polylog communication and computation per query, which are both really nice. Uh, but we essentially get bottlenecked on rounds of communication between the parties per query. And in practice, well, in theory, that's not often regarded. In practice, um, latency is very expensive. Um, so as you can see, these constructions don't really get off the ground. And so we have uh, DORM, right? So we just looked at the previous constructions, and we have DORM of Vadapali, Henry, and Goldberg as the state of the art that we're all going to hear about, like I think, about three talks from now. So we can finally now get to our protocol, which is, oh, sorry, our questions before our protocol. So our questions, when we started this, we were thinking, can we build a DORM that performs hundreds of queries per second for memories larger than 2 to the 20? Would it be possible to do it for even 2 to the 30? And how would the performance degrade? And our contribution to this question is a cryptographic protocol, a DORM protocol, GigaDORM, which utilizes the hierarchical solution, but is also round reduced. And the, I guess the key insight, maybe the north star of our constructions, is that we can trade off some increased computation and communication for having many fewer rounds per query. So here are our results. So this is, this is GigaDORM. Um, and this is the performance that we have in very good network settings with uh, low latency and high bandwidth on AWS. Uh, as we'll show in the next slide, our performance in poor networks is comparable. And aside of this uh, cryptographic protocol, which we give, we also give an open source implementation. That's, uh, if you follow that link, I'm sure you'll get to it. So in the previous slide, I essentially showed uh, the performance of GigaDorm in this uh, good network setting, in the poor network setting, so this is this, these plots show for 2 to the 20, and if we look, this is uh, 2 to the 25. We see that in poor network setting, our performance is pretty comparable um, with DORM, and we see that for both constructions, uh, latency is still the bottleneck. And that as memory size increases, of course, as expected, GigaDORM outperforms DORM. Uh, but still, performance pretty comparable, I would say, in these settings. So I guess as an added plus, GigaDORM is about 10 times more, uh, I guess, like, you can get more bang for your buck at 120,000 queries per dollar. OK, so I guess I talked really fast, much faster than I expected, which I guess is something that you do when you give your first talk. So good thing I prepared more slides. Thanks, Rafi. Um, and so I'll talk a little bit about a few, uh, I guess, technical details for the experts. Um, so if one thing, one of, one of our main optimizations is increasing what we call the base amplification factors. So for those in the audience familiar with the hierarchical solution, um, I guess you would know that in many constructions where you, um, the, the amount by which every oblivious hash table in the hierarchy goes by is just two. And I guess we're able to ask like, is that really the best number to grow by? And through we show that if you change some things in like the rebuild schedule, you can make um, the you can change the factor by which each oblivious hash table in the hierarchy grows. And we actually find, I guess, like for us, it was quite surprising that about like a large number, like 128, would be uh, somewhat optimal. The benefit is less rounds and latency and more expensive. Uh, and, and we pay a little bit in bandwidth to do this. 
I guess I'll just quickly glance over a few other techniques. So we design a more efficient top level um, to the hierarchy. Um, and we use, I guess, like CNF silent multiplication. So even with the data in the dorm gets quite large, we don't really pay multiplicative in the size of the dorm in the hierarchy and the size of the cache, only additively. Um, another technique is that we show that you can batch the PRF evaluations that are needed to query each level of the hierarchy, where they're usually sequential and those rounds are expensive. Um, and we also overall, I guess, design a shuff table, which is a more round efficient oblivious hash table that still maintains pretty low uh, communication and bandwidth. And other than the, uh, uh, there's more in the paper, right? So uh, we benchmark many DORAMs, we provide circuit files for low MC, which is a popular pseudo random function for MPC. We, to the best of our knowledge, give the first implementation of alibi reinsertion. And we also give uh, competitive multi-threaded implementations of some previous MPC frameworks that we use internally within the paper. Um, so to conclude, uh, we give Gilgit Doram um, a Doram construction which makes progress towards building RAM MPC for large memories. And we have some future directions that we're pretty excited about. So um, malicious security, there's a more theoretical paper that's up on ePrint, and dishonest majority, right? We presented our Doram in the 3-1 semi-honest setting, and it's still open to do anything interesting in the dishonest majority, as well as that we'd be happy to see integrations into open source MPC libraries, as well as applications for MPC. Um, so thank you very much. I guess some more links. There's our uh, implementation as well as uh, Jacob made a great video that can walk you through the implementation so you don't have to struggle uh, to trying to set it up yourself. Thank you very much.